everybody. Nate Lee here. Welcome to Opinionate. It is our third segment of this new show. Um, we certainly appreciate all of the response from one and two, two being the critique, my favorite so far. Um, we spoke with Mrs. Cindy DeLuca on the first one, who was running for uh, Hazelton mayor position as the uh, independent candidate. And today we are fortunate to have Mr. Bob Yevok here, who is running on the Democratic side. Um, he has an opponent in that race uh, who has been invited, um, not necessarily today, but before the election, invited to come on the Opinionate, and um, I have not heard back from him. So while we'd love to have him on, he has not responded, but he has been invited. So with that, with that being said, um, I want to say hello to my good friend Bob Yevok, who I have known pretty much my whole life, him and his brother uh, Joe and sister Mary Beth. Um, I have known them, uh, they grew up five blocks from me, uh, right where we're taping this on, uh, on 19th Street. Um, and he is running for mayor. I believe this is your second time? It's my second, second run. run. I, run I ran three and a half years ago. Right. And uh, uh, I don't know too many people that win a race the first time out. I think your name's got to get out there that you're doing it. And this is probably a rough town to be a Dem uh, for mayor. I, I, I know we've had them in the past, but I don't know. I don't know. Well, Do the thing of it is, the Democrat, are? right now, the Democrat, uh, I'm, I'm really outnumbered. It's it's a Spanish registration with Democrats now, where, right. where there's a lot of good people there. Right. So I got a big fight here. I got a real big fight. For but, the primary. For the primary, to okay. win the primary. Now, if I could get the primary one, like I won last time, I won the primary three and a half years ago. I beat two people. Right. And I got to the big dance, but this time it's a little different. If I get to the big dance this time... I got a lot of Latinos and Spanish friends out there that are really, like, talking about me. So right. things could really change here. Well, that's a great thing. Um, what's your experience with Jeff Cassano? You guys are friends, right? Well, right. we've been friends. I Jeff, I ran the Little League program in Hazleton for 40 years. Right. And Jeff played Little League. He's way younger than me. Listen, I have nothing against Jeff Cassano. Yeah. Jeff did a lot of good things in a couple, in a couple terms that he's there. Right. I'm 68 years old. I'm a lifelong resident of Hazleton. I just want my legacy to be that I helped the people of Hazleton, and this town made me a lot of money. It made me a lot of money. I started when I was 17. I, you know, I had I had apartments and houses. I had over 20 buildings going. I'm a landlord over 50 years. I had several different businesses for 38 years in you know in the city. Right. I made a lot of money. This city made me a millionaire, and I am so proud of that. And it's my turn to give back to the people. That's awesome. You know, in my first show, I talked about that. I said that in the in the in the beginning of time when the, when the country was formed, most of the people who served that went to Washington went there with means. They had money and they had means, and they went there for two reasons. One was to give back because they felt so fortunate, I believe, and the second one was for power because after you have money, the only thing left is power. That's the only thing that you crave. Um, I I don't I'm not saying that because I think that's what where you are because I do not think that. I think you genuinely want to do good stuff for Hazleton. I just do. I, I, you know, I've known you a long time, and I think in your heart that's what you want. That's what you're looking for. Nate, I was a giver all my life, and I look back at the Little League program because that was one of my biggest biggest ventures in Hazleton. I started up there when I was 17 years old. Right. I did it without kids for 40 years. I built a complex that's like second to none in the state of Pennsylvania. Right. I went through a lot of people. I did a lot of things. I raised a lot of money. I got a lot of grant money. I, I stay involved. I just recently, 12 years ago, got involved with the Mark Chunk Opera House down in Jim Thorpe. Right. I went down there to see a show. One thing led to another. The thing, the place was like had a lot of issues. Right. And I started talking to people that were involved in it. I got involved. They made me the president of the whole organization. Right. I brought the place back to life. In right. the last 12 years, I raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. I was able to get big grants for the place right. to put air conditioning and new stages. Right. And I, I was really good at that. I will be good like that with the city. I'm good at going out there. I'm an aggressive guy. Right. I'm going to go out there, get money, just like any other buddy, like, just like Jeff Cassatt's doing. I will be on them grants all the time. And, you know, like recently Jeff put a, a, a thing in the paper, like three pages of stuff he did. 
I'm going to have that. When I'm the mayor, I will have three pages of stuff in four years. Right. I'm, I'm good at that. I'm aggressive. I will make this Hazleton a way better place for the people of Hazleton living here. That's great. You know, one of my questions to Cindy was uh, about the employees, and she thought that it was not relevant to her campaign. But already, in the way you're talking, we already know that that's not the case uh, with you because you've obviously had a bunch of employees. That place we were just talking about down there, you know, lots of employees. Well, and we'll see. Managers. I, and I had a I had a big auto spot down in Pottsville in Pottsville for 18 years. I had over 20 employees there. I got a business that I went in there and I built, I bought it, I bought it for like over 500,000, half a million, and we were only young, young people, me and my ex-wife, right. and uh, I, had, I had five businesses on the same lot, a Jiffy Lube, a conveyor car wash, a detail shop, self-service bays, with a lot of employees. I took that business, I grew it, I made it like into the best place on, on 61, on Route 61 in Pottsville, and, and I just ran it for the 18 years. It was a landmark place, and I ended up selling it to a bunch of Korean people for a million four fifty. I did that because I knew how to run a business. Right. I knew how to deal with employees. Right. I had everything that that the site needed. Right. Yeah, I already, you know, I I already knew that about you. I knew that story, but I'm glad you get to tell it today, to uh, to anybody who's watching the podcast. Um. So okay. So that being said, what what do you feel like you could do differently? than Jeff is doing or that that anybody has. Done. What I think I could do is, like Jeff, you know, he did a number of good things here. I mean, I'm not bad-mouthing anybody. I just want a chance to do better that's and, a like, great, like that's put a it great together. Attitude to have, but, but what I want to do is, remember we had the mayor of New York, Giuliani. Yeah. He married one of my high school friends, yeah. Judy Stish. Right. We were good friends in high school. I had the opportunity to meet Giuliani a few times when they were in Hazleton, when they right. lived up the street, right. on Carson Street, right. when Judy's family Found rather. Joanna, yeah. And I had, a, I had a chance to meet him, and he told me a couple things. He said, you know, Bobby, he said, Hazleton needs the broken window policy. Start at the bottom. I said like, that let's go, show. Let's go out there and let's get people that are throwing, th throwing papers on the ground. you got to go after them first. Small and, stuff. And small stuff, Big and the rest will fall in place. It'll take care of itself. So what and I they wanted, laughed at him when he uh, said it. They laughed at him when he said it, and he made New York one of the best places it. to live. He fixed now, it. Now, when just knowing what he did there, I would like to go in with that mindset, right. and I'd like to go after, we have a code department office with three or four guys. I talk to them all the time. Right. They're frustrated because they don't have enough help. There's not enough boots on the ground right. to take care of what's going on in Hazleton. Right. I want to get some part-time people involved in the code office, right. make it a big code office with a lot of people that we have boots all over the ground. Right. And I could do that, and we could start small and get right to the big things and make it a real safe place. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, you know, that, like I said, I mentioned that on the last podcast with about Giuliani, and he, I read his book, and that's what he said. Take care of the small stuff. The big shit takes care of itself. I met him twice. Yeah, a good guy. I always liked him, and uh, and that was a trip that he married a, a local girl. I guess they're divorced now. Yeah, they're divorced. Yeah. yeah, Judy was a good friend of mine in school. Where is she? She's not in town, right? She's up in New York, yeah. Oh, she's in and, New York. And uh, like I said, I graduated with her. Yeah. You know, I Great sat family. next to her in hometown. Yeah. That was a good family. Yeah, yeah her parents used to come to, at a restaurant. I used to and, and she was his nurse in the hospital when he had prostate cancer. That's how they got together. Oh, really? I thought yeah. it was a cigar bar. No, I heard no, a story they, about she was, in a cigar She was bar. his nurse oh. in the hospital when he had prostate cancer. That's, wow. how, that's how they connected. How about that? Good guy. Love him. Love, uh, love the family. So what else? What, what else? What else? Well, what I, what I like to do is, <clears throat> if you take the city in whole, all the administrators and all the departments, we have a, a, a big group of good people. We have a police department with a chief that's second to none. Oh. They're just great people. They're doing right. their job the way it's supposed to be. And listen, I'm all over Hazleton. I walk 10 miles a day. I'm in every corner. I see every street. I, I walk in the alleys where nobody walks. Right. And I see what's out there. Right. And we got the people, like from the city road department all the way up to the fire department. We got great people. Right. And and Brian, our, our police chief, he's out there. I, You know, they, people say, well, where are the cops? <laughs> when I walk, cruisers all over the place. I'm always waving at a cruiser. Yeah. So we got a good mindset. I, I'm going to surround my my people, myself rather, with them good people, and I'm just going to make it better. Well, you know what? I always say uh, you could just have to give people the tools. 
and direction. Absolutely. You have to give them direction Absolutely. and tools. And you have to know how to manage people and how to get them to do what you need them to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. You know, you can't tell them something and then they turn around and go, well, you know, it's cool. Absolutely. Um, they have to respect who they're, who they're working for. They don't have to like you necessarily. Right. But they have to respect you. Right. And I think that's very important. And I think that that's... Uh, that's what's going to win the election is that kind of uh, that kind of attitude. Well, another thing that, that I see out there is I you know we're we're divided. We're like really divided with Latinos, with blacks, with Spanish. Are like we're we're divided, and right. I want to be the guy that can unite unite them people. And I yeah. know I could do it. I have a lot of friends on the other side. They just have a different culture. Yeah. And all we got to do is go out there and we got to just like set them straight with that culture and our culture. Right. And we can make this thing happen. Yeah. We can make all these people be like, just like everybody else in Hazleton. And we can make Hazleton be a, a city that we can all be proud of. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> I love what Joe Madden did. Oh, absolutely. When you make as much money as he did and has and be as successful and be, you know, the number one uh, paid manager paid in managers. baseball yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah. I mean, this guy's from our hometown. We, yeah. we ate at the third base with him all the time. <clears throat> I love Joe Madden. He, though, when he was on 60 Minutes, he did himself not too good in yeah. Hazleton because but, be, it wasn't what he said. It was, it was how, he, how said he said it. it. Exactly. He dismissed it was you know, the he old folks. It. He said they just have to die. Absolutely. I understand that completely because you're not going to change that mindset. Right. 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 What gets me in Hazleton is, and I have said this long before I'm in the notary business and they are a big part of my clientele. Right. When I was working at the stagecoach, I said, I think Quigley was one of the smartest. I didn't know him. I was in Nashville. If this guy wouldn't have brought, started bringing these people here, and by these people I mean this, the, the Latinos, Hispanic right. people, we wouldn't have a city. It would be boarded up. There'd be no can-do. There'd be no Humboldt. There'd be no Valmont because there'd be nobody here to work hey, in. Hey, I, 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 I want to say something. Like all the storefronts in Hazleton, like every street, every yeah. corner, north, south of right. Hazleton, there's hundreds of them. Yeah. And if we didn't have the Spanish and Latino people here in them storefronts, yeah. Our people, the white people, would never open a store. It would be a ghost town well, with sure. empty bill, empty It'd empty buildings. Detroit. Yeah. I tell I tell you that I walk ten miles a day, and I walk all over the city, West Hazleton. I walk everywhere. I walk through West Hazleton all all the way up by West uh, Broad and Diamond. Yeah. And there was a little hole in wall, in, a, in a wall storefront there. And as I would walk by, I would say to myself. You know, one of these weeks, I'm going to see something at all. And it was empty for probably 25 years. Wow. I guess about two months later, I'm walking through. They're selling high heels in there. And they open a little shoe store, you know? So we got to give these Latinos credit. Absolutely. Because they are go-getters. Exactly. They're just good people yeah. to start businesses, rehab buildings. They find their way. Yeah. And, and we got to acknowledge them and for that. And they're family oriented. They're all people. family Listen, oriented. When our when our folks when my folks came over from Italy, I, I'll tell you a story. My grandfather, uh, one time somebody came in the house, and they said the N word, and my grandfather said, "You're gonna have to leave." I said what? He said, "Yeah, we we don't use that kind of language in our house." He said it in broken English. Yeah. And when he left, I remember saying to him, "I said, you know, what, what what's up?" And he goes, "When we came here, that's what they called us." And that's what happens. People don't like change. Right. You want to talk about the bad ones? Well, we could talk about the bad Italians, the bad Polish Absolutely. people. Absolutely. The bad, you know, there's bad people. The problem is this drug shit that has taken over the country. Right. This fentanyl, and you know, we smoked a little weed. We did a little right. partying on our day, but nothing like what's available now. And it's not Hazelton. It's everywhere. Right. I travel right. this country. I go on vacation every six weeks. I'm either in Florida, Nashville, Vegas. I mean, I'm always, I love to travel. It's everywhere. Absolutely. When I get up in the morning, what do I do? I turn on the news. What are they talking about? Murders. This happened. But fentanyl is what's doing it, man. Absolutely. I mean, those kind of drugs. So you can't blame these what short memories they must have if they're in Hazleton yeah. talking about, you know, I remember the 70s. Do you remember Mob City, USA, the yeah, T-shirts? I remember no, that. The police well. were robbing places. Yeah, and very the, well. You know, every, who's well. getting drug raids every six months in right, this town? Right. There were no Latinos here. Right. There were no Latinos. No, it's been all. happening forever. 
and people have a little bit of short memories, but um, like I said, I love the heritage that they bring with them. I love the whole, Same and I've, I've said that long before they were my customers. Well, you know, and they, they saved like, the city. Through the years, I bought my first building when I was 17 years old, my first little apartment building. And over them years, I'm a landlord over 50 years. And I had over 20 properties, like through my, my, my setup as a landlord. And I had a lot of Spanish people, a lot of white people. Listen, we had all kind of trash in them. <laughs> but there were like so many good people too. Sure. But the thing of it is, we can make we can all get these everybody together. There's a way to get them together. We yeah. just got to work a little bit at it. We got to get our cultures together, and we could just have a good city here. So, uh, Bob, I saw your sign about the dump. This is a topic that I really don't know anything about. I know that I've had some friends of mine that live up near there that are just livid about this. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that it's a revenue stream for the city, so they need the money that, that that's going to bring. But maybe that's not the right location, huh? What's going to happen there is this Rinaldi guy, you know, he's connected, he has a, he's a, a billionaire, and that dump is not a place to put in Hazleton. Right. It, it just isn't. And the entrance on Broad Street, it's like really stupid. Right. The city going to benefit? They're going to fill them, them holes in back there, and all they're going to do is the city's going to benefit down in the road maybe 10 years where they could build a warehouse there or something. It's oh. not worth it. We have a transfer station down in, in, in Tamaqua, 20 minutes away, right? I, if I was there, I would make the people, we have a garbage fee of $35 a unit right now, the people would happily pay that $35 a unit and let their garbage go to Tamaqua. They're like really okay with that. Right. Putting a garbage dump right in the middle of Hazleton, a transfer station they call it, and it turns into a dump, is not good for Hazleton. And I will fight that tooth and nail. And if I win this primary and everything works for me on Tuesday, I will have petitions in every store against the dump. I will work hard to fight fighting against that dump, and I, I will just be... The, the biggest biggest is, person they have. Is it open now? No, it's not open. Oh. It's all in the planning stage. Oh. Like, it's all in the well, planning why, why stage. Why did I hear all these trucks were already going No, 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 it? no, no, no. They only had one meeting in City Hall. With that the, never the, happened. It, it, nothing happened. I nothing heard happened. they were smelling no, it. I no, 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 it's You gonna, are kidding. There's not, the dump. Never happened. They're just talking about it. And the only thing they did right now is... They came, they had one meeting in City Hall with DEP people, Rinaldi and all them guys, trying to lay out and tell you what they were going to do there. Right. But I am totally against that transfer station. Yeah. And if they want to fill stripping holes in like that, like behind where the dump, where they want to put the dump, we have strippings down the street. They can get slate banks and fill it in easily. Right. And I want to give an example of what happened there. We had a great attorney in Hazleton, Pasco Shimo. Yeah. And he had he owned all the property on the Beltway. Yes. He owned all the property where Sheets is and everything else. Right. There was a massive strip in there, thousands of feet deep, right across from Sheets. Yeah. Pasco got a deal with DEP. He went across the road. He got all the slate that was there at Slate Banks, filled that hole in. They just sold that property for $4 million. So he had the right idea. The dump. That only fills people's pockets with money because everybody's on the take when they want to put a dump there. And I, I don't want nothing to do with anything like that, you know? So I want everybody to know before I close this podcast, Jeff Cassatt sees how this could turn out. I'm a candidate for a Democrat candidate against Vinny Castro for mayor. Jeff Cassatt, when as, he's going as a writing candidate for the Democrat side now. He's unopposed on the Republican side. People out there, anybody that writes Jeff Cassatt's name in is the opportunity to give him the okay to put the dump there. Mm. Well, that's a good point. Um, before we uh, before we close, um, anything else that he's doing or that's in the works or things that you know, you know things that you want to work? Because I mean, the town Hazel Township's rich. Yeah. West Hazleton even does good. Right. And that's because of Humboldt and Can Do and Valmont. Well not right. Can Do so much, but Valmont. I mean they're they're paying big tax revenues to those jurisdictions and Hazleton doesn't really have only the hospital. People say if that hospital ever pulled out, we're done. Right. Because I guess they have a lot of money. It would be a big problem. And and now another thing is 
we have these warehouses coming in, probably like six or seven of them, like on right. 309 up right. on the Beltway and that, right? So I want, I want everybody to know here, everybody's out there wagging their tail. Oh, look, at we sold this property and we're getting these warehouses in and we're going to have so much money, right? right? I, at my detail shop, I had the opportunity to meet a couple of the big guys that are doing this warehouse deal. Right. And they brought their cars to me. They were in town. They wanted to get their car done. When they were at my shop, we talked about it. And I said to them, I said, look, it, you're from Kansas City, Missouri. How did you end up in Hazleton to do these warehouses, right? Their response to me was, look, it, we didn't talk to one politician. We didn't talk to any kind of mayor, anybody like that. 80 and 81, the crossroads, we can go anywhere we want within a couple hours. That's what brought us to Hazleton. That's why Hazleton's still city. That, that's why... 80 and, that's, and 81 or why Hazleton's That's city. what brought them to Hazleton. So yeah. as far as all these guys taking credit, oh, yeah, we went out there. Got, they did nothing to get them people here. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. All right, well, if you don't have anything else, man, I mean, let's talk about somebody that proved their credentials to do it. You absolutely did that. You're not going to see me critiquing your podcast. Um, <laughs> no need to do that. Um, I, I, it's just a great job. Like I said, I, uh, I'm i thrilled that you wanted to Can come on. I just on. say one more thing? You man? could say whatever you okay, want. Okay, what I'd like to say is I've been working so hard at getting this nomination for the mayor. I just want to tell the people of Hazleton, all the people, I don't care what color you are, where you came from. I will not let you down. I will become the mayor of Hazleton, and I will be the most working mayor they ever had. I will be in City Hall all times of the day. I will have an open-door policy, and I will get things done because I'm one of the most aggressive people in Hazleton. And it goes without saying that you'll be walking to work. And I'll be walking to work, <laughs> and I'll be walking to see your problems. I will help everybody. That's great. God bless you, buddy, okay. and good luck to you. Okay, man. Hey, folks, I want to thank everybody again for uh, the huge amount of support for these podcasts. Um, joke of the day, <coughs> man, my allergies today are off the charts. Um, this little old lady's walking to work. She works at this building down the street from her house. She's walking to work. She sees they have a new pet store. So she's looking, oh, my gosh, and she goes up on the uh, little landing of the pet store, and she looks up, she sees a parrot. And she looks up at the parrot, and the parrot goes, Hey, lady, you're ugly. And she, oh, my gosh, she was so offended. And she turns around, and she walks away, and she walks to work. <coughs> All day that bothered her. So on her way home, she thought, well, I'll try again. I'll stop and see what happens. So she stopped. She went up to the thing. She looks up at the bird. The bird goes, Hey, lady, you're ugly. Oh, my gosh, she said. And she turns around. She goes home. She tells her husband. She said, I am so offended. She said, I feel so bad. He said, you know, it's a new story. You should probably go in there and tell the management that that's going on. He said, that's not a very good way to st start a business. So sure enough, the next morning, she's on her way to work. And uh, she walks up in the landing and looks up at the bird. And the bird goes, hey, lady, you're ugly. Oh, my God. And she storms in the store. And she said, I want to speak to the manager. So the manager comes out and she, sa he sa she says to him, uh, you know, Every day now on my way to work, I come, I go up on the landing there, and your bird tells me that I'm ugly. She said, I don't appreciate that. I know you're new here. The business is new, so I don't think that's really a good way to start start out. And he said, oh, my gosh. He said, I am just so sorry. He said, um, trust me, that won't, he will never say that to you again. I really apologize. So she said, okay, I, I appreciate that. So she leaves, and she goes to work all day. She's thinking about it at work again. So she comes out of work at 5 o'clock. She's walking home. She steps up into the vestibule, and she looks up at the bird. And the bird says, you know. That's all I got. Have a great day. Thanks again. We'll be in touch.